Okay, we've got a question here. How to become a cyclist as a runner? First of all, I just want to say, if you want more cycling information, I've got a cycling only channel. Just type in during rider cycling tips. I also have another channel where I go dive deep, really deep. So deep, a lot of people don't want the information, but it's on my Ask Dune Rider channel. Right, so if you want to see some relationship stuff, and we go deep on that channel, Ask Dune Rider, go suss it out. Dune Rider Cycling Tips and Ask Dune Rider. I have other channels, but these are the main two. So you've got to find information in. How to become a cyclist. And so I've got a question here from a guy who was a, I think he was a sub 30 minute 10K runner on the track, on the road. So very, very fast runner. And he's had the Achilles injuries, Achilles surgeries over and over. So that's poof, running's done for him pretty much. At that level anyway, I'd, I'd agree. Maybe give us some time. Maybe you can come back to that. Who knows? But cycling is where you want to be. If you can ride a bike without any Achilles issues, then sweet. If you still get Achilles issues, then have time off. Complete time off. Maybe do swimming. Do something else that doesn't affect your Achilles. Let your Achilles heal. If you have Achilles pain and you train through that, I, I don't... I, I can't remember in the last 20 years anyone ever overcoming Achilles injuries with more training. Doesn't happen. I've seen people snap. I've heard the Achilles snap off the bone there. It's like, bam! It's like a crack. It's literally the Achilles strips off the bone behind the heel there. And it bunches up in the calf and it's like, Whoa! you know what I mean? Crazy. So if you have train pain with the Achilles, please don't train. Switch sports, have time off. It's fine, have time off, you know. I've had an injury this year, I've had time off. I had a concussion early in the year, I haven't been able to train this year because of it, you know. I had on and off here and there, a bit of training, but written the year off. That's just fine, this is how it is, you know. Sometimes you, you have things out of your control, you just have to shift your focus to something else, okay. Now, with an Achilles, then that's really easy to overcome because you just have to listen to it, you know. A concussion can come and go, it's like, you know, pervasive, pernicious, etc., but so anyway, this question in the video is this guy wants to get into cycling. He's you know very been a very fast runner. He's like Mike Woods, that, that pro cyclist guy there who's a very fast mile runner. And so it's pretty easy to transition over. You know, you'll find that you need to eat more. Because you you burn cyclists burn way more calories than running. You know, you, I can go and do a 10-hour ride today, hypothetically, and burn, you know, five thousand to seven, eight thousand calories. I can't go and run. I, if I did a 5K today, I'd probably be buckled. You know, even though I'm a 1635 5K runner, because I haven't ran much this year at all. So if I go and try and run, my legs are going to be sore, I'm going to risk of injuries, blah, 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 you know? So cycling burns way more calories in a week, in a day, than running will, okay? If you're talking minute to minute, yeah, about the same. Same effort, same amount of calories. But you can go a lot longer on the bike. You can go and ride for eight hours, listen to a podcast. You can't try and do a... An eight-hour run. <laughs> you have to be. You have to have like some. You have to have like ten years of conditioning to be able to do that. Or five, you, know, you have to have an incredible cadence and efficiency and super lightweight to be able to run eight hours, like with no like yeah whatever. I can do an eight-hour ride. Come home like yeah whatever. Running, no no. So you're gonna have to eat more, but that's okay. That that your appetite will just rise up, and just listen to it. You know? Listen to it. Give it the carbohydrates. Give it as many carbohydrates as it wants. Never. If you come home home from a long ride and you're ravishingly hungry, you shouldn't be hungry because you should have eaten enough on the ride that you come home and you're like, "Ooh, I feel actually pretty stuffed." Actually, you know, if you come if you come home for a ride, and you're ravenous. You're being very unprofessional, unorganized as a human by not meeting your carbohydrate needs. You shouldn't come home from a ride hungry. You should have eaten enough every hour of the ride. So you like you come home and you're like ready to do something else, have a nap, have some water. Like, just, but you should have had your water and a carbs on the bike. Okay, so I mean, you can still eat when you come home if you feel like eating, but if you're ravenous, you didn't eat enough on the ride, okay? Simple as that. So always bring food on the ride. I recommend 100 grams per carb per hour, you know, at least, at least 50 grams of carbs per hour, between 50 and 100, just enough that you're never, ever hungry. Eat before you're hungry, carb before you're hungry, and you'll be good to go. And you'll be like 43, super lean, don't have to worry about your weight ever again, don't have to be hungry, hangry, run on the stims or whatever. To be a functioning human being, getting it done, fully charged up. What good is a camera, smartphone with a great camera, if the battery keeps running out? If the battery only gives you 10% of the day because you don't have enough carbohydrates in your body, you're only good for 10% of the day. You might be funny or good looking or whatever, 
but then you've only got 10% battery charge for the whole day. And you're out with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your side girl or side chick or your boss or your employees. And they're like, great, you've got 10% of good for you for the day. And the rest of the day, you're just a hangry, cranky asshole to be around. What good is that to anybody? All right, so carb up, never be hangry. If you're hangry, don't get enough carbs. Carb up, have a nap, have a sleep, come back, boom, let's go. Versus coffee, 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 anxiety, depression, flipping out. I'm sorry what I said. Sorry what I said when I'm under All right, Don't need to do that. Don't have to apologize. You never apologize. If you do, do. Avoid apologizing, but avoid fucking up. Get your cars met, okay? If you are wrong, make it better. Apologize. But I, I don't like apologizing. I like doing right from the get-go. If I have to apologize, I will, but I like getting it right from the get-go. Okay. So I'm just giving you some esoteric stuff here. If you want to talk about that, they're like, well, I'll do a periodization training program where you calculate your FDP, which means nothing, because that changes every day in your motivation and all sorts of levels are there. Get a power meter. You know, that'll help you pace things and understand things. So three minute K pace, that's probably about six watts per kilo. Okay. So here's little collations there. Four minute K pace is about you know, four watts per kilo. You know, 330 is about five watts per kilo. Okay. So there's little things like that. You can get a power meter. It's going to help you pace a lot. Get gears on your bike so you can spin at least 90 cadence. If you live in Florida, whatever. If you live in Colorado, you want to have gears where you can spin 90 cadence up the hills when you're going for it, etc. That'll help reduce your chance of injury, reduce your chance of tendonitis, reduce your chance of your Achilles flaring up again, give you better back health because you're not grinding around and you, you know. There's a time to grind in the bedroom, but on the bike, spin, 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 okay? That's how you get better efficiency. Same as runners. Um, what else can we say? So carbohydrates, eat enough every day, unlimited carbohydrate, and um, water, drink before you're thirsty. Aim for clear urination, two to three, uh, every two or three hours, clear. So your blood volume's good, your digestion's good, your mood's good. Your, your chance of heat stroke is zero because you've got sufficient blood and sufficient hydration so your electrolytes are stable because you're not dehydrating yourself and tweaking out your aldosterone levels and your cortisol levels and your all the other electrolyte-related levels from dehydration that can waver those things. Um, so, and sleep, get as much sleep as you want. You need more sleep as a cyclist and a runner. And if you do use any stimulants like caffeine or Ritalin or any what people are using these days, I use them in the morning. So then by the lunchtime evening, you can start to like, oh, wind down. If you're using stims after 9 a.m., you're going to be struggling to sleep efficiently that night, effectively that night. Right? You might go to bed and get your eight hours of effective, efficient sleep, but it's not been effective by having that deep sleep. That makes sense. You got eight hours of sleep, that's efficient, Eight hours of deep sleep, that's effective, okay? Efficiency is getting things done. Effective is getting things done in a way that improves you, okay? Efficient is, no, no, no. We want, to be, we want effectiveness. Effectiveness. Efficiency is a minimum. Effectiveness is the ideal. What else can we say? Uh, bike, I recommend a sub-7 kilo bike or a sub-8 kilo bike if you're noob. Something like Alloy, Trekamonda, ALR, Specialized LA Alloy. A good starting bike. I recommend Shimano caliper rim brakes. I recommend alloy rims. Good rims to get would be Spinergy Z lights. I've got an ebook called Dream Riders Lean Body Bible. It's got a buyer's guide in there, constantly updated, free updates, and that's just got all the save you thousands of dollars and years of faffing around and all the, the not schemes, but I mean, they're almost schemes. Set, let's call them semi schemes in the cycling industry, designed to just fleece you with overpriced, nonsensical product you don't need. Or you don't need to spend that much money on a pair of Knicks that'll cost 400 bucks from Pock or Raffa or whoever. I'm just like, that's... Or a helmet that costs 400 bucks. I'm like, come on, mate. Really? Pass the same safety approving rating. You don't need a $400 helmet unless you've got too much money and not enough sense. Um, but that's the best, best. And pay attention. Here we go. Pay attention. I talk about it in my ebook, Drew Rider's Lean Body Bible at DrewRider.com. Plug there. Fantastic ebook. It's the book I wish I had back in the 90s when I first started racing and riding. I would have saved so much time and faffing. And um, pay attention on the roads. Right? When, you, when you're riding along, don't talk to people like that unless you want a broken collarbone because something will come in the road. You'll be like, oh. I remember riding in Thailand with a friend of mine, Tamo, and he's an ex runner, got him into cycling, Tamo. 
and he'd done very well for himself. He's a vegan dude in Thailand, loves Thailand, came over to Thailand to, to visit me and uh, to experience the Chiang Mai lifestyle. Done well for himself there. And anyway, so we're riding down the highway to back of a bunch of riders. We go to Doi Intanon, Tamo was there. And me and we're, we're sitting right in the back. And uh, Tamo, we're talking, we're having a chat. Yeah, we've got a lot of things in common chatting. And I said, I was about to say to Tamo, dude, just keep your eyes straight. I thought, I'll be polite, I'll wait for him to finish his sentence. And he's just like, chatting to me. And I should have interrupted him. Because what happened, a chicken ran out. And I saw it, the guys in front of me saw it. But because Tamo was looking at me, being, you know, think of being polite of eye contact, he wasn't looking ahead. So he just hit the rider straight ahead in front and cracked his collarbone. And all that training. You know, he's out for two or three months or whatever. Just because he was being trying to be polite by looking at me. So eyes up the road. Look down at your power meter, look up first, all right? Look down to the Christian room, look up, look down, look up, okay? Be aware of what's in front of you at all times. If you look behind yourself, understand you might weave over this way, all right? You might weave over that way. So just just be, yeah, practice at slow speed before you go high speed, okay? Go downhill, easy. Go easy, downhill, or go easy <laughs> eating the hospital food, all right? Your choice, your choice, you know? <laughs> So, um, these things, you know, I've seen people die on the road. So, it's, I've seen people snap their legs in front of me. I've seen people screaming because their pelvis is fractured. You know, pelvis broken in bed, okay. Pelvis broken on the road, not okay. That's just the deal there. How to become a cyclist from a runner. Transition over slow. Listen to your body. And uh, spin to win. Get mountain bike shoes. I recommend mountain bike shoes. You know, high level mountain bike shoe. Carbon sole. Super stiff. You know, Bond specialized. Shimano, they'll make great some great cycling shoes. Try different ones on. Get get shoes that are long enough. All right? Don't get short shoes unless you want pain. Don't get narrow shoes unless you want bunions and metatarsal cramping and inefficient nerve signaling and eh, pedaling like that. When should you be pedaling like that? Spread feet. Make sure your cleats are lined in so your heels are in. If you stand up, look down, relax feet. If your heels are in, you want to pedal your heels in as well. Okay. I was going to get mad ITB pain and go to orthopedic surgeon, get an arthroscopy, whatever, and you know, funnel down that thousands of dollars nonsense. So these are all little tricks and tips that I talk about in my ebook, Do Not Lean Body Bible, and uh, to save you a lot of hassle, man. That's why my girlfriends get so fit so quick, because they're from day one on the right path. They don't have to learn the hard way. The little cheat sheets. I really appreciate it when people told me back in the day, Today in this day society, we don't really give tips out. People are like, I want to hold that secret for myself because I want more likes on Instagram. Don't want to you know, let the competition in. And so then the noobs suffer for that. So I like to put it out on the table. Boom, it's there. Like it, love it, leave it, whatever you want. But it will work for you and it will be a game changer. And uh, yeah, this stuff works. It works. All right. You got any questions down below? Check out the other channels. Do you to... I didn't fight then. That was... Uh... Do you hear that? It makes me a bit conscious. It wasn't a fire, by the way. Dune Rider's Cycling Tips and Ask Dune Rider. Two different channels for real and more information. Peace. Cycling.